What's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. So today I obviously have my custom Lego Star Wars ships right here and that is because I wanted to talk about some beginner's tips whenever it comes to building uh, like mainly Lego Star Wars ships is what I'm going to be talking about because that's kind of what I specialize in. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go over some tips I learned along the way of making three ships at this point. Um, I'm by no means a pro, by the way, like, I'm just, I just do this for fun, um, and these are not, like, you know, top tier, it, it's just something I enjoy, you know what I'm saying, so, I wanted to make a video about some tips I learned as I've, you know, gotten better, because I've been making custom LEGO Star Wars ships since the dawn of time, like, <laughs> since I got into LEGO, you know, um, I... <laughs> Back in 2020, I tried making a custom gunship. Um, at the end of the video, I might put a picture up of what that looked like because it was, oh my gosh, it was horrible. And I thought I was like Albert Einstein. I thought I had made a great gunship. But yeah, it, this stuff takes time. It takes time to learn skills. And yeah, like I said, I'm by no means an expert. But yeah, so let's just start right off with the first thing you should do before you even start making a ship. Be inspired. <laughs> Like, uh, like, I know it's kind of dumb, but it's like, if you don't have the inspiration to make a ship or or something, it, f trying to force yourself to make one, it's not going to be fun because you've all, we've all been there. We're trying to build something, whether that be a set, a custom thing, whatever. And if you're hungry and grumpy and not interested, it's not going to be a fun time. So yeah, just get inspiration, whether that be from a video game, from a movie, from, from whatever Star Wars media you enjoy. Just uh, be inspired from that, and it creates that passion as you are building to get it done. But yeah, so the second thing you gotta do is research. If you're not researching it, it's gonna turn out pretty crappy. Why? I <laughs> have a lot of experience. <clears throat> the Mantis from Fallen Order. Um, I made it back in last spring um, and I did not have any reference photo. I was simply going off my memory, which I played through the game before, like I knew what it looked like, but you're gonna miss those details that the ship has whenever you're not looking at a picture of it or something. Whether that be you have the game pulled up or you're watching the movie or whatever it is. If you're not looking at what you're building, your brain's not gonna remember every little detail. So. <laughs> um, what happened was I made this ship and then I had to then go back and fix it up a bunch of times and, you know, just overall try to make it better because I got in the game and I was like, dang, I really, like, did not add that. <laughs> or, you know, it looked a little, a little goofy. Um, but yeah, so just do your research, figure out, like, what it looks like. And that's not to say that it, it needs to be the most detailed build ever. But, you know, <laughs> y y you want it to look like what you're building. Um, yeah, so the next thing I usually do is I try to figure out what scale I will be building said ship in. Do I want to make it minifigure scale? Do I want to make it playset scale? Do I want to make, like, you know, and the thing about minifigure scale that kind of annoys me with, with you know, it's just people make minifigure scale such a big deal but I don't think people realize 99% of playsets that Lego makes are not minifigure scale. But they look normal, right? I mean, the Millennium Falcon, a normal playset Millennium Falcon, it works with the minifigures. It looks like the Millennium Falcon, you have interior space, but it's not anywhere close to minifigure scale. Um, so yeah, don't get too caught up with it, but also... Decide if you want to have an interior, if you want to be able to fit minifigures in it, if you want it to be huge, like, that kind of thing. With these three, I kind of did it like the scale that LEGO would make a playset in. So, it's not necessarily minifigure scale, but it's also not small. They These are all pretty large ships, which is why minifigure scale is, you know, it's a little bit annoying. Because it's like, nothing is really minifigure scale unless you make it huge and use thousands of pieces. <laughs> like... A UCS set and even then some UCS sets are not minifigure scale so yeah sorry I kind of got in a rant about minifigure scale but it's like 
I usually, whenever it comes to custom ships, just try to make it like a playset scale that Lego would make for a typical set. Anyways, after you kind of choose that, then I do my layout, which pretty much means I'm, like for the Ebonhawk, for example, I like made a base plate or I took base plates and kind of lined them up in the shape that I wanted it to be, which, you know, I was looking up a picture to know what that would be. But that's kind of where you start. I At least that's what I do. I kind of just take my base plates, connect them all, make the shape, and then from there I start to build. Um, and that brings us to how you're going to build it. Um, obviously, don't start building something if you don't have the pieces for it. Um, so, let, like, let's say you wanted to build a mantis or the, the rogue shadow. If you don't have any black pieces... <coughs> Maybe, maybe don't build that ship, you know what I'm saying? Or or maybe build it but use a different piece, you know, it doesn't really matter. You you do you, you be creative how you want, but if you want to make an accurate ship that you don't have the colors for, or you don't have the pieces for, don't waste your time, you know, spending a lot of time on it and then you get to that point where you're like, dang, I don't have the pieces for this, I can't finish it. Because, Trust me, I've been there. It is horrible. You spend so much time on something and you can't finish it because you don't have the pieces. Um, and also, <laughs> this is another thing I know from my own experience. Don't take pieces off of existing sets you have to try to make a custom set. Don't do it. <laughs> I did that too many times whenever I was younger. Um, and then that resulted in a bunch of sets just being half built. And then I got to a point where I just destroyed them completely because I was like, well, what's the point of having a half built whatever? And so, yeah, just try to use your extra pieces. If you don't care about a set and you're willing to take off the pieces, that's okay. But just don't, just just try your best not to because trust me, you will regret it like I have. Um, thank goodness I did not do it to like too many sets that I really care about now. But I definitely did do it to a few that I wish I wouldn't have. But, yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's another thing with the building is um, your technique. So, whenever I was younger, I was very much... Not even younger, just like even two years ago. It was very much like, okay, if I need to make a wall for this ship, I'm just going to sack up bricks. And then... Like, the, the outer edge is going to be stack up bricks and I'm going to put a plate on top for the roof. And it's like, it, it, you know, it's very rudimentary kind of building. But if you want to make your ships that much better, you know, try the snot technique. Try this, try that. Like, use bricks in ways that you usually wouldn't to get certain shapes, to get certain looks. And it all, overall makes it look cleaner. Um, the first time I ever used snot, which is studs on top, which is pretty much where you make the studs, um, instead of like placing a brick and the studs are facing up, you are placing it on the sides the the studs are like jolting out. Um, and that, that works because then you're able to tile off those studs and make a very sleek look. Um, the Mantis was the first time I did that on a custom ship. The sides of the walls are actually snot technique. And if you look closely, I was able to get some design in there that I wouldn't have been able to do um, if I had just built up with bricks. And, and overall, it just makes it look a lot more sleek and clean with that whole tiled off look. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend, you know, just, and, and it's not just snot. There's so many different techniques um, to use. The uh, Ebonhawk, I don't know if you can see, but... Like the inside in between two of the brown little things, um, I have these pieces that are supposed to like look like kind of vents that are, I don't even know how I got them to get in that shape. It's like a circular, it, it's really hard to explain. I did something with the bricks that I don't know, but it worked really well. <laughs> so yeah, just don't, don't restrain yourself into certain things you can do with your bricks. Just try, try anything to get a certain shape. It might, you know, work in your favor. Um... But yeah, so you know, you're building your ship, you, you, you got a whole plan going, it's going well. Um, but then, you know, you get hungry, you get bored, your hands start to hurt, whatever. Take breaks. Don't try to, you know, push through building if you're really hungry or grumpy or, you know, whatever. Like I said earlier, whenever you're building for a long time, that tends to happen. Um, yeah, just, just take a break and come back to it, you know. 
you, for me, like if I ever get stuck on like, oh, what am I going to add to this? How am I going to fix this? I just take a break and I come back and I'm like, oh, I can do this with this and that'll work. So, you know, just take your, take breaks and also take your time. You're not going to get a custom, like, if you're trying to go really detailed and, you know, make up your own design, uh, or not on design, like, but, you know, make your own ship, it's not going to be done in three hours, unless you're, like, <laughs> that good at building, but typically it's going to take maybe a few days. Um, the Ebonhawk, for example, took me <sighs> three or four days, I think, and it was, like, seven hours of building a day. Which I know is kind of crazy. It's like, wow, why, why did it take you that time, long enough time? But it's like, I was looking at reference photos. I created the design all by myself. Like, it, it just takes time, you know? The Stinger Mantis. I, up until, like, a few months ago, I was still upgrading it. You know, trying to fix it because I did such a sloppy job the first time. Um, and then the Rogue Shadow took me, like, two days. Because it is a smaller ship compared to the other ones. But, um... Yeah, just take your time, don't rush, because you, if you rush, like I said, you're going to have to pay for it later by fixing it up. Um, and yeah, another thing to consider is the sturdiness of your ship. Um, obviously, custom ships are not going to be nearly as sturdy as, um, you know, a Lego playset, because it's not going through the testing that a playset goes through to make sure that it won't break. But just make sure it's somewhat sturdy to where you can pick it up and move it without it crumbling. Um, that also includes landing gear. Make sure your ships are elevated because it just makes it look that much better, but make sure that the landing gear is also sturdy so it does not crumble. Um, uh, <laughs> the Ebonhawk has like four or five landing gears underneath because it's very dense. Um, Stinger Mantis has three and then the Rogue Shadow has four. But yeah, another thing about like the rogue, sh rogue shadow i was running out of black uh plates and stuff so the two little things that come out the front are actually all bricks that are used with the snot technique so it worked um but yeah so another thing is your minifigures add minifigures to, to your custom builds it really makes them that much more fun and cool um you know, I got really inspired with all these ships because they're from my three favorite like, or <laughs> Star Wars video games. So, like, the Ebonhawk, I made all, like, the main characters and a few villains. Fallen Order, I made the main, <laughs> like, the main characters. Same with, with these. And that's honestly, like, the funnest part. I usually wait till after I'm done with the build itself. And then it's, like, the my reward is that, like, I get to add the minifigures and stuff. And like I said previously... Don't take off parts from existing minifigures, please. You're gonna regret it. Unless you have extra parts or unless you don't care, don't come up to your display and like grab base to Cody and take off his to like, you know, just try, try your best not to. Unless you want, again, guys, this is, these are your bricks, this is your whatever. It's just with my experience, I always try not to do that because I used to do it and I regret it. Um, but yeah, another thing with minifigures, like, if you don't have, if you're trying to make a custom minifigure and you don't have any parts or there's not any parts to represent it, um, you know, painting is always an option, uh, c customizing stuff. For example, here's my Kalo Nord from, uh, Nazi, Nazi Old Republic. I really wanted to make him, and I, so I just took some blue arms and kind of painted his design, like so. And then his visor, I just put some, I got some tape and then I put some black paper underneath to make it black like it should be. You know, I, I didn't sharpie him, I didn't do anything like that. The paint can be removed. Uh, I did not ruin the minifigure. Um, I just customized it. And yeah, so now I have a, a Kalo Nord. So stuff like that works. Um, and yeah, I guess the last thing I'll talk about is accuracy. Um, before you go into it, just choose, like, do you really want to make it accurate? Or are you just going to do, like, kind of a, you know, n not accurate version? Like, from my experience, it's always best to go for ac accuracy. Because it's like, why why make it and not have it accurate, right? It's like, 
just just go ahead and just take the time to try to get as much detail as possible obviously it's lego you're not going to get every single detail but you know as long as you're in like the realm of how it should look that's fine right also you know just working in a in a color um you know coding everything like just, like just keep it all like the same kind of color theme um the mantis i was kind of able to take that liberty because there's a bunch of custom colors for it it doesn't really have one color so i kind of just used colors that i had a lot of to make my own kind of custom color but whereas like the ebon hawk that's just brown and gray so that's what i used for that same with the rogue shadow but yeah so that's kind of just you know some beginner tips for building custom um i'm gonna take the phone off but building custom Star Wars ships. Like I said, I am in no way a pro at this. It's just something that I really enjoy doing. And yeah, I've made three, three ships that I've not broke. <laughs> like I've made a lot of custom ships in my time of being a collector, but these ones I've liked enough to where I'm like, yeah, I'm not breaking it. I think these are pretty cool. Um, as well as the minifigures, I've not, you know, taken them off. And also, like I was saying earlier about the minifigures, about not taking them from existing sets. Obviously, these minifigures are from existing sets, but they're kind of just ones that I had in my minifigure um, box over there. So, yeah, they were just like extra, um, you know, parts I had. Um, but yeah, so if you guys did go ahead to enjoy this video, make sure to hit like. Um, Jedi Fall or Jedi Survivor, the gameplay footage just re uh, like came out. And you can pre-order the game. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> thank goodness the Mantis is still like the main ship because I would have, uh, <laughs> I totally would have had like make a custom version of like the new ship in Survivor or whatever. I might do like an update on the Fallen Order figures for Survivor. But yeah, so anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.